Welcome to Talking Halos. This is Derek C. Paul with my co-host, my partners in crime, Jared Timms and Nate, shall I say, negative Nate, Green. <laughs> yes. And he's smiling at it. Perfecto. Oh, he is man. smiling at it. And folks, Embrace the culture. Us. Culture. Uh, well, and hopefully the last podcast, we made it clear on where we stand as a podcast or where our views are. Um, and I, listen, if you're if you're looking for something positive, hey, the Angels won last night 10-0. Woohoo! Recording this at the time right now. Last game, 10 0 win. Great performance. Some really nice pitching. Some uh, Trout got hot. Shohei got hot there. Lots of good things last night. So there's your positivity, right? Guys, were we there? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I mean, so, side note on that as well. Uh, Mike Trout tied Roberto Clemente in Fangraph's Ward. War. You're welcome for that. Yeah. Yes. So super for random. The, but... For the statistics, just speaking of analytics. Yep. Analytics. But, um, there's something I got to talk about. I'm going to be frank with our listeners today. It is not going to be positive. This is going to be negative. It's going to go back to some of our feelings in terms of what we've seen in the front office before. More with Artie, but now we're coming from a different direction. And listen, if you're looking for something flowery, come back tomorrow night or another night. All right. Tonight's not going to be that night. We're going to break this down. And from what I can tell Artie from what we just read, it's not good. And it's not good at all. So, Nate, <laughs> you found the article, um, but it's so where'd you get it from? Who wrote it? And let's go from there. I saw it on OC Register, and it was a little bit of a podcast slash OC Register thing, and I just thought it was interesting. Joe Men kind of alluded to this a little bit with a with the Tampa Bay Rays article right before the Angels played the Rays about three weeks ago or so. And now it feels like he got more in depth with what he was talking about um, with the Tampa Bay Rays beat writer about three or four weeks ago. So I, I was interested with it. So right away, if you have a subscription to The Athletic, um, go listen to the podcast. with oh, so Landville and uh, Jason Stark. Oh, that's but what it was. Let me read the quote to you, and then we're going to get into this because there's a lot here just in this paragraph. Quoting, here we go. I'm not arguing against analytics and information, Madden said. I'm arguing against the methods and the imposition with coaches because at the point it is right now, every day we get ready for the game and Perry and I would come in and they would start talking about how I should use the bullpen that night. Like I haven't done that for the last 40 years. When you do that, when these people do that, the game becomes cloudy. You're in the dugout, you know what you'd like to do, but these people have come downstairs prior to the game and they load you with stuff that's not necessarily helpful. All right, and that's Joe Madden um, referencing basically what is an, I mean, let's be honest, that's micromanaging. It's what it is. And, it, of course, we know he gets fired in the midst of a losing streak. And since then, the Angels are a train wreck of all train wrecks in terms of the record. So I'm going to start with Nate because we all know how Nate's going to feel about this, right? But Nate, I mean, your first thoughts, you found it. What we, what's going through your mind as you're reading this? First thought that goes through my mind is Perry comes out when he gets the job and says, like, I, I think Joe is the perfect guy for me. You know, he's not too analytical, but he's not, not into analytics. And it seems like analytics is the only thing that Perry cares about. He's not, like, halfway in the analytics world where it's like analytics are good, but too much is, is, is bad. And it almost feels like we're at that Dodger territory where people want Dave Roberts fired every other week because they lose a game that, you know, Dodger fans think they should have won because Dave Roberts made a change in the bullpen and they didn't agree with it. Maybe they went to Jansen in the ninth and Jansen blew it, or now it's Kimbrell in the ninth. And, th and that's kind of what it feels like. We're, we're at that stage where every other minute we're, we're yelling at the manager for, something the general manager actually wanted to happen. Jared? It's, it's interesting because I don't think Nate, you mentioned this. The very first thing, some of the very first things that Perry said were along the lines, and I'm not going to quote this, were along the lines of, I'm not analytical and I'm not an old school type of guy either, if I'm not mistaken. He said, you know, I'm, I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle. This feels very analytical to me, you know, um, very new school baseball. And for me, the way I look at analytics is just numbers, you know, and numbers help back up 
what is true and what is false. So um, is there a play, is there a place for analytics in baseball? Absolutely. Is there a place for old school baseball? Absolutely. And I don't think a lot of people kind of know where, where that is at the moment. Um, so yes, I, 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 it's very interesting to me. Um, first off thinking, you know, that Joe Madden was maybe a little more analytical than, uh, what he, than what he said to be. And second off for Perry to be a lot more analytical than what he said to be. Um, and I think, uh, I, I did it say the name Nate of, uh, who came in with Perry in a sense, Alex. Alex, Alex. And I, I'm going to be honest here and I'm fairly well-versed with the angels front office. I heard, I've heard the name. I had no idea who it was. Um, and that's for me where things tend to be an issue because I feel very well versed in, in angels baseball. And I know, you know, a good chunk of people in, in the front office and uh, scouts and such like that. So it's, um, it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. And I, I know we're going to discuss this further. Alex Tamman coming from the Atlanta Braves also with the Dodgers. So he's very versed in the analytical world being uh, a guy from the Dodgers and, and, the, the scene that, that kind of I see when, when I hear this, when I read this, is the money ball scene where, where Billy Bean walks into to the manager's office and says, anybody but him out of the pen first. I, I don't care. I want to see Bradford. I want to see, you know, anyone but him. And, you know, I don't want to see Pena starting. I want to see Hatterberg starting because it gives us the best chance to win. And, and that's what I see, and that's what it feels like right now. And, you know, I – have been on the Perry is more to blame than meets the eye train. I know a lot of people have given Perry a lot of credit for the way he's drafted. And I think he's done a really good job with the development of the pitching, but um, what he's done offensively for the angels, I don't think enough depth was, was created for this team. I, I don't think that you could expect Fletcher and Rangifo and Velasquez to carry up the middle for the entire season. But yeah, it, it feels very much like that, that money ball scene where you hear Billy Bean coming into the manager's office telling him this is the way things are going. And, you know, if you don't like it, I'll trade the guy and I'll make it easy on you. And for me, before I get back, we get back to there for me, you, you make Perry the scapegoat and he is, that's exactly what a GM does. That's exactly what a manager is. That's what, that's what Madden was. That's what Nevin is. That's what those guys do. Those guys are the communicators, right? So basically what you should be saying, what we should be saying is, I mean, yes, Artie, or not Artie, yes, Perry is maybe making some decisions, but it seems like the analytics office is making a lot of the decisions. The scouting department, the development side of things, you know, yes, Perry gets blamed and Perry, you know, gets praised for doing good. And, and it happens everywhere, right? It happens everywhere. Um, you, you look, you know, you win a World Series and the first person you hear from is the manager and you hear from the GM, you hear from the owner there's a lot more that goes on in the background, you know, of that side of things. So um, scapegoat, 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 scapegoat is, is the way that I think about it as well. You know, good communicators, but those are the guys you blame. Those are the guys you praise. You know, it's, it's I, I'm, I'm going to be a bit of a pain in the neck here because I know when we were talking before the show about how we're going to structure this conversation, um, I'm going to shift it because something just kind of popped in my mind. I don't know if you guys ever seen the movie Gattaca. You ever seen the movie Gattaca? In the movie Gattaca, it's about how society is basically genetically engineering human beings to, to get rid of all the disease and all they're only allowing human beings who are quote unquote perfectly engineered to do all the important things in the world. Anybody who's not engineered this way genetically, they're relegated off here. So why, why am I going there? Because in the end, the main point of the movie, the main character is somebody who's not engineered, somebody who's who uh, had asthma as a kid, didn't do anything, and his brother was the astronaut, and his brother was this, and his brother was that, and then he, but yet he always found a way to beat his brother in when in competition with swimming. Here's my point: we have all these perfect numbers that can go out there and throw with the analytics. We can go out there and make everything show in the numbers, right? But just like in the movie Gattaca, if you remove the humanity of a person, the, the intangibles, then something gets lost. My concern with this approach the angels are taking is we're removing all the intangibles and relying solely on numbers to the point where you're interfering in a manager's, in a manager's 
management of the game. And by doing so, you are hurting your chance of winning. You cannot eliminate the intangibles. You cannot eliminate the X factors. You can't put those numbers until after the fact. And that's my concern. If you are going that extreme with the numbers, that you are going to go down into the clubhouse and tell your manager, this is what you're going to do. That's a problem. And we picked on, we went at Artie when he did this crap with Billy Epler in terms of micromanaging. And we realized it's a problem. And now you have your manager, your general manager, doing that with your manager, a person who, by the way, regardless of how you feel about Joe Madden, he deserves more respect than, than, than what he's being given here. The guy's been in the game for four years. He's been a big part of your organization for much of his career. He deserves that leeway to manage his ball club. And I, I know you guys didn't really mention that as much, but I'm a military guy. I grew up with chain of command. I followed the chain of command. It was how an organization was structured. And to see the chain of command undercutting coming down and basically what that to me what that does is is you're planting doubts you're planting things in this manager's head and creating a possible fear of losing a job of losing um of losing respect to your players you think these players didn't know that minasi was doing this stuff in some kind of way or form you're undercutting your players why would you do that your team's off to 27 and 17 start you're going to lose this kid fine and you wonder why it falls apart so um, I know I'm, I'm going a little on and on about it, but I want to make, I want to paint that picture and say, this is a problem. And if the angels are selling, it makes me all of a sudden question whether or not Minaj will be around. To your, to your point, the angels were 27 and seven, 10 games above 27, 17, 10 games above 12 games, above 500. What happened? Why did it change? Were the angels full analytics? And Joe was like, you know, well, let's start doing our things. And then they go on a losing streak. And then it's like, uh oh, like, what now? You know, like that, 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 I, I don't know if that happened. Again, I don't we're think talking that's skate. the way it happened. I don't think that's that, the way it if happened. If that's the way that happened, then when Joe was gone, the Angels would have started winning because Phil yeah. Nevin was his guy. Phil Nevin was the only guy hired by Perry Manassian that was not a Joe Man hire, obviously, besides Ray Montgomery, which I think is something that I was going to bring up to, to Derek is. We talked about this a lot in the offseason. Ray Montgomery coming down from the front office, never been in a coaching room before, never been in a dugout before as a as a coach. And and Perry Manassian says, Yep, you're the you're the new bench coach. You're going to watch everything Joe Madden does. Actually, I'm gonna tell you what to do you're and you spy. tell Joe what to do. Yeah, you're you're, you're the, the guy. Exactly. But what kind of that what kind of culture are you create? It's not a great staff? atmosphere, it's not a great culture to set, and that's one thing. And and the other thing that I think is is the real quote that stands out to me is is a part where he says it gets cloudy for me i think when you're a manager and you understand your players and you know like hey i've th i've thrown to pair three days in a row the numbers say to pair is the best guy to face these two hitters i can't throw to pair tonight a and they're saying you know the numbers say we gotta throw him out there or loop hasn't thrown well his last two outings it says loop is the best guy to throw in this situation I personally, as a manager, I've done this for 40 years. I think Luke should probably throw in the fifth, sixth inning because that gives him some confidence to get back into the seventh or eighth inning. Um, but the numbers say he needs to come in in the seventh or eighth inning to face this guy. And, and that's kind of the issue that I see is that, you know, Joe kind of understands what these players have gone through. He's been doing this for a long time. And if somebody's going to come down and say, hey, this is the numbers, this is what you got to do. And it gets to that point where Joe's like, <sighs> I know I should not be putting Aaron Loop in the game right now, but the numbers say I have to. So I either put him in and we lose, or I don't put him in. And I know I'm going to have to go to the meeting room after this game or tomorrow morning and have to hear from Perry saying, why the heck did Aaron Loop not come in the game? We didn't win the game because of this. Or even if we won the game, Aaron Loop's got a pitch. That's why we pay him eight and a half million dollars. Uh, Aaron, when, yeah, you're, no, when you're thinking about this, what's your take here? Yeah, no, definitely. And this is, this is Okay. Like going back even farther now, you look at how many GMs Angels have brought in and how many new managers Angels have brought in with those new GMs. And Perry and Madden weren't a thing. Like that Perry, Perry is Artie guy. That's fine. Perry is whoever hired him guy. Joe is an Artie guy. Joe, I already hired Joe. Billy. Or Billy, whatever, however you Slash. want to do. Exactly, exactly though. No, my point exactly. You need to bring in, like if you're going to bring in new new GMs. And this is now my worry moving forward with new ownership as well. If, if you're bringing in another GM with this new ownership, it starts over again. 
right? It's just like college football. It's just like football. That's the way I, I love to look at it as like college football. You bring in a new head coach, you bring in all your new recruits, right? You give, you need to give them four years. Billy, how, how long did Billy get? Billy, I don't think got quite long Three enough. Half. He got, he got one year with Brad Osmus doing his thing and they brought in Joe Madden, right? He had, he had to, he had to deal with, uh, he had to clean up Depoto's mess, which was probably Art, Artie's mess and Carpino's mess. That's fine. Right. This is where this disconnect, we're, now it's starting to all come together, I think, a little bit, is this disconnect is coming full circle, you know? I'm, like I said, I know that, you, Nate, you're blaming Perry for a lot lately, but if Perry is going to bring in his own guy and you have a good form of communication between the front office, between management, between the players, and between an owner, whether that's already a new owner, and hopefully that new owner doesn't change stuff up too quickly, you know, because I want to see what Perry can continue to do because he's done a pretty good job with developing pitching. I know that, you know, we'll talk about that down the road, but if, if Perry can bring in his guy next year and, and use and build a team how he wants, right? Like, are, are we starting to see where these disconnects are kind of coming? can't in do what he did. See, we're talking about bringing his guy in. He's going to do the same crap to that guy. I don't think the club, he, to the clubhouse and tell him what to do. That's, that's a problem, man. That's baseball. That's, that's a how baseball, real problem. I agree. It, it I, is, I agree. That's how baseball, baseball is now, though. That's but, how baseball is. That how it should be? Is that but, how it's going to be run? That's seventy five percent of baseball, right? Like how how so many what? owners undermine your players and your managers? Yes, one hundred percent. That is, but seventy five percent of baseball is right now. You look at uh, there are probably the five Dodgers five team, managers, sure. probably five for sure. I was going to say five managers in baseball that do it their own way. Tony Lewis was one of them in Chicago, and we'll see how long he's there for. Um, Terry Francona think, probably has got a shot there. I think he's still coaching, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's still the guy there. I think I think Snicker oh, does it. I think Snicker does it himself as well. Snick. I think Aaron Boone does it himself. I think Aaron Boone has the leash that Joe Madden yes. wanted. I well, think Aaron it, Boone is gifted material and say, here is the material. Use it as you may. I'm not going to tell you how to do your job, but this is you know what the numbers say. And I'm by no means backing up analytics because I don't think that 100% analytics is the way to go. You look at the Dodgers, they haven't won a World Series since 1986 or whatever it is, and I'm not Ooh. counting 2020, the Dodgers. I'm counting that World Series, man. Mm, they want everybody the plays this game season that year. Come on now. No, the Dodgers were the different only team who didn't have to travel, but we'll, Tampa, we'll move Tampa on. Bay, Tampa Bay, right? Tampa, Tampa Bay, Bay Tampa Bay is 100 analytics. They do it by the books. Analytics, analytics, analytics. They go by the numbers. Haven't won a World Series. That's how hard. I mean, to bring like, Oakland. Again, Oakland circle. was in Oakland. Oakland's in the playoffs like every year. This is like those, the first time in like those eight years teams, in the playoffs. Like they they understand how to win in in the regular season. You winning a World Series, winning in the playoffs is a whole different beast. Like that, but that's that's luck. I my... agree. <laughs> and, but we we're talking about well, it's how things are in baseball. You know, you mentioned Terry Francona. No, no, I'm out here in Northeast Ohio. Terry Francona in that front office are like this. Yeah, no, hundred. They're not. They are not. You don't have anybody dictating Terry Francona. They work together. That's how it needs to be. I can, and when I you are bringing you. somebody in. Like apparently you're bringing Joe Madden in, even if he's not your guy. Like how, you go into any organization, any successful organization in the world, any one of them, you're going to be hiring people from across different spectrums. You have to work with them. You have to. Mm-hmm. Again, bring up the military again. You are bringing people from different cultures across the country, sometimes out of the country, and they have to work together as a cohesive unit. It doesn't matter what your background is. So, to me, it, it, there's still a certain level of respect that has to come between general manager to manager, not just a general manager going down to your clubhouse and dictating to you how you're going to handle your business. If you hired somebody to be a manager, they should be managing. Stay out of there. You want to have a comment later? You want to have a meeting later? After the fact, fine. So be it. That's what you've got to do. But don't go down to someone's clubhouse and tell them how to manage your club. That's how baseball is. That's how, like, some is but is 100%. it working? In fact, it's not working. In, in fact, that's it's not working. In fact, I, I, I'm sure I'm going to get trouble for selling the story. I'm covering Mike Trout's press conference uh, whenever when he signed a couple years ago. Me and a couple other writers are walking down in, in the in the clubhouse. We we look in an open door. You know who's there? Jerry Depoto. Wait, I take that back. Billy Epler, because Jerry wasn't there. It would be Billy Epler and Mike Sosha at the time. Was it Brad Osmus? Had it Osmus because twenty nine. Osmus. Okay. Well, my yeah. story just got ruined there, but I guarantee you they they were having a meeting. You look in there, 
and it's 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 every but, single time. That's, that's but also Brad it. Osmus is a is the thirty second best manager in baseball at that year, and there's only thirty of them, so he yeah, needs no. that kind of help. That that's the problem though is these GMs are hiring people that might not be the best for the job, but they're the best to listen to what the GM wants. That's or why that's maybe, why some of these big name guys aren't getting getting jobs anymore. Flip it around, Nate. Maybe maybe and I'm just throwing this out there, and I, it could be totally wrong. Maybe one of the reasons why Austin did this did as poorly as he did was he had, because he had somebody in his ear the entire time and wasn't allowed to actually manage the club. The only reason I say he's bad is because he was with the Tigers with one of the best teams in, in yes. this generation to not win a playoff game. And so yes, that's when why you I talk say he's to, bad. When you talk to guys from Detroit and you find out, yes, Austin has problems out there, but you had your own general manager, Dombrowski, undermining him by selling, by cannibalizing bad. their own roster. I don't think that's a Dave thing, honestly. I think Dabrowski is one of those guys who lets guys do their thing. He's more old school than new school. But, that, but what I'm saying is he hurt, he also hurt – you talked to the guys out there. We had him on, we had him on our show, had him for, for Tiger Series previews, and he consistently told me, Alspeth got hurt out in Detroit, and he, he had his faults, but also Alspeth got hurt out there because Dombrowski, in his hunt for the World Series, cannibalized his own roster to try and bring in players in, in that – backfire in their faces so there's more i mean it, i understand and, I, and i'm not i'm not necessarily disagreeing with either yeah. of you on it i just think we don't really have a scope because which way was it is it did did alspice suck because he had someone in his ear all the time that wanted to do his job or did he need somebody in his ear because he sucked which one is it he only managed for two years three years total we don't know does this situation, and, and I know we're probably going to have to let people go here, does this situation remind you of opposite of what happened with Sosha and DePoto? Like, could it start? Well, it's, the same, it's the same thing with Sosha and DePoto. DePoto comes in and says, hey, this is the way that we're, we're going to, no. to do things. We're going to be more shift oriented. We're going to do this with our bullpen. And Sosha's like, no, I've been doing this for a long time. Leave me alone. Let me do my thing. And it didn't work out. I think that was part of the reason why it didn't work out is because Sosha was so old school and Depoto was way too new school. Um, the, the thing is Perry's going, if Perry gets another shot and if he gets to bring in his own guy, he's going to bring in, you know, a more new school guy. He's probably going to be bringing a guy with zero managerial experience. And he's probably going to bring in a guy who has played before. That, that would be my guess as, a, as an ex player with zero managerial experience. Who's just happy to have the job. Isn't and that like a Phil Nevin? Yeah, um, Phil Nevin's coached before. I, I don't think he's going to bring in a, a guy who's ever coached before. So, I think he's going to bring in somebody who, almost like a John Jay, John Jay will not be the answer, but someone like that who has not coached before, he just got done playing, and that's kind of going to be his answer, I think. But I don't know if that's the right way to go about things. We'll, we'll find out. Well, there's a, there's a something that we – I'm and people are going to hate me for bringing this back. But there's a name absent from this entire conversation that means me pinpointing here in that it's already this is his organization and he's done it he's undermined his people he's had his people undermining his people you know you're the leader of this organization you need to set standard in this stuff and if you can't you then he's the right to sell a team if he can't run a professional organization that is doing things the right way down the board then you got to go so if he's selling the team and this is what he's allowed over there, but he's got to go. And we're not talking about that, but if, look at this. If he's running his organization as tight ship, that's probably not happening, Joe Madden, is it? I mean, say what you want about, say, for example, Cleveland's ownership. And Cleveland's ownership with his fans sucks. But as a baseball operation, there's a reason why they compete every year with a minimal payroll because they are a true baseball organization from the top down to the bottom. And if the angels want to do that, they have to actually be a full organization. And that starts at the top. Leadership's always, it's always at the top. And we're not seeing that. Why is that continually happening in the last decade from DePoe to Socia to Epler to, to now? It shouldn't be happening. You want to win World Series, you want to get back to the playoffs? Heck, you want to have a winning season? Hey, actually try having a professional organization. Right, we're running out of time. So, and I'm talking way too much. Jared, give us some thoughts here. Well, you got to find the middleman, right? I mean, at the end of the day, you, you have to find the middleman. 
whether it's analytics, which is if Perry sticks around with new ownership, you know, you, you got to try to find that middleman if it's analytics or not, um, or if it's old school or not. So it'll be really, really interesting to see, um, see what happens. That's why I'm, we're going to talk about all off season. That's why I'm so nervous about this off season. You know, this is a, this is, this is a, this is a big, interesting, interesting is not even the right word. It's a, it's a big off season. So uh, Nate, I don't know if you had any final thoughts before we let everybody go. I was just going to say this, this needs to be handled this off season before Perry gets to pick his new manager. If, if there's a new owner, we need to find out if Perry's going to stay before the next manager because we do not want to have to go through the same scenario where we get a new owner, we get a new um, a new manager, but we keep, you know, and, and a new GM after the manager's already been hired. So we want it to be in the correct order. GM gets to hire his manager. So that's what I'm hoping for. Here's a problem with that. It's already September. You got to get an order in place quickly. And then to have your front office in place quickly. The timing does not work. It is time for us to go. And I want to throw this last comment out there. And I, I mean, I'm like this a positive, hopefully. This is an organization that 20 years ago, this October, won a World Series. They have a winning tradition throughout many, many years. They put many great teams. You have many great players. You have many great people in the organization. No, Jared can vouch for that. The, the the fans, the organization itself deserves better than this. And it's time the Angels got in gear. That's not a negative or a positive. That's just a statement. It has to change. Or else this is what we're going to doing every year. Going back and going, okay, what if? What if? Those are final thoughts for your day. Follow us on Twitter at Talk and Halos. Follow Jared Tims at Jared underscore Tims unless you change it. Nate Green 34, am I right? Bam, memory. And follow me at DC Apollo. Time for us to get out of here. Oh, oh crap. YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube and you're not subscribing, freaking subscribe. We don't make money unless you subscribe. We need a thousand subscribers to make that magic happen. We're on the way, but we need your help. And if you have anybody out there who is interested in what we have to talk about or maybe wants to get involved here itself, subscribe. Right. Have a great one.